dollars one is 28 dollars some of them have rgb some of them are more basic um and yeah one of them i think has a usb hub included we're gonna look at all the different features there are links in the description down below um let's talk real quickly what all we're gonna cover in today's live stream so uh we're gonna start off with comparing some features and specs of the different laptop coolers. Then we're gonna look at uh, unboxing all the coolers, look at what's included in the box for each of them. And then we're gonna establish stock thermal measurements for the Legion 5 Pro. All right, now this is a laptop that does thermal throttle on the Ryzen processor, at least it did last time that I used it. And so I'm very curious to see uh, what does it do now? Um, with a, a thermal cooler, is it going to thermal throttle or not? And then we're going to do a Cinebench R23 and we're going to swap the laptop from each cooler. We're going to do a stock measurement for Cinebench R23. We're going to see how much we can get in a, like a five runs in a row consecutive and see how much it thermal throttles. And then we're going to do each of the thermal coolers and we're also going to measure the fan noise for the laptop stock and then with each of the coolers to see how much of a difference it makes and how loud each of the coolers are um, like can you run it can you run the laptop cooler and quieter at the same time or is it actually going to be a louder overall experience and then whichever laptop cooler wins this Cinebench R23 comparison with the Ryzen chip we are going to move on to doing some game testing with Time Spy, Warzone 2, and Dead Space because both of those are very CPU heavy, which are going to likely thermal throttle. They did thermal throttle during the initial unboxing review. And then we're going to move into a final summary of is it actually worth messing with laptop coolers or not? Honestly, I don't have that much experience with them because usually I just run it without a laptop cooler. So this is going to be a very experimental and interesting live stream test for me today. Um, all right. So, uh, am I going to be willing to avoid the warranty and do a teardown on the IS GT 500? Maybe, I don't know. Probably not. It's not really the focus of today's video. I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for, uh, Patel there. So you have to let me know a little more specifically what you're thinking, but uh, I'd invite you to like the live stream and come along with the journey for me to figure out our laptop coolers actually worth it. I honestly right now have, um, I'm not sure, like I'm on the fence. Like literally I'm on the fence because I don't have that much experience with laptop coolers in general. Like I, I, I've seen some reviews of them and it's kind of hit and miss. Like seems like it might not be worth it. But then I hear other reviews are like, oh my gosh, laptop cooler. It's so worth it. It like took 15 degrees off of the temperatures. Well, if there's a laptop that it could take 15 degrees off of the temperature or significantly potentially improve the performance of it, the Legion 5 Pro laptop certainly could, is a good candidate for it. Like look at this. Um, this is the original. Uh, live stream unboxing. You can see 101 degrees on the CPU in dead space at 71 watts of power. This laptop gets really hot. And so we're gonna see in dead space, can we get um, lower temperatures or like, to prevent this 101 degrees? Uh, I, I have not tested this before this live stream. This is gonna be me finding out at the same time with you. Um, and then how much wattage? Maybe we can go a higher amount of wattage or get more performance at the same temperatures or not. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe, maybe it won't be that much of a difference. Maybe it'll be a big difference. So that's going to be the premise for today. Um, of course, there's also Warzone 2. Let's go over to Warzone 2 real quick. Um, just pop into the do, 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 Warzone 2 gameplay. So, um, so right here in Warzone 2, you can see we're hitting 90 degrees Celsius, um, which is obviously not very good. Uh, not thermal throttling, but not great on the temperatures either. And let's just see as we go along here, it's hitting 91, 92. I saw 92 degrees there. So it depends on what area of the game, 93 um, degrees. So you could, we could theoretically at least see maybe lower temperatures. We'll find out both of these games very CPU focused Warzone 2 and Dead Space. Uh, so, and this is a laptop that does thermal throttle with the CPU. So I think it's a really, really good example. Does a laptop cooler actually help improve the temperatures or performance or not? Um, let's find out. So this laptop list, I just wanna make sure you guys know, this has been updated. Tons of new deals um, are out today on here. Um, as of like yesterday, basically like, like a 
ton of new deals uh, came out and some really, really good ones. I made a detailed video going over all of the best ones uh, and released that this morning and did a live stream yesterday on it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to do that every month, do a, basically a top deals live stream. Uh, but I just wanna point that out. There's a link in the description to this laptop link, uh, laptop ranked list, and you can click on these and see benchmarks and see links on where you can buy these laptops as well, as well as photos and video reviews. So there's a lot of detailed information here to check out. Now, going on to the laptop coolers, let's talk about it, all right? So um, here we go, the IETZ the I -E -T -Z GT500. This is the one that we're, uh, this is the most expensive big bad boy that we're gonna be testing today. It's got like this uh, vacuum suction thing. You put the laptop right on here. It sucks air through the laptop and out the back, I believe. It's got some RGB lighting around the outside as well as a USB hub here. So we're gonna have to test that out and see how well it works. Next up, we have the K-Ben. This is um, an interesting one because it's for 15, up to 15.6 inch laptops. We've got a 16 inch laptop, but it's technically basically the right size. Um, we got dual fans in here. We also have a little phone holster stand. Um, and it says it has two USB ports, but this one's only $12.98. Next up, we have the Langstar uh, laptop cooling pad. This has six fans in it. Uh, and it's got, a it's got legs that prop it up. Uh, We'll see, it's got multiple switches. It looks like it has some LED lights in it. I'm curious to see how that is. This costs $27.99. And this one looks like it has a ton of RGB on it. I don't know how good the RGB is. The pictures make the RGB look really good, but maybe the RGB in practice is actually really crappy. Um, and of course, all of these say super quiet, low volume, not very loud, but in actuality, I bet they can get quite loud when they're on all turned all the way up, but we'll, we'll find out, right? Um, so just know that there are links in the description to this. All of them are right here with us today. We'll be testing with, with the Legion um, 5 Pro, uh, Pro 5, Legion Pro 5 with the Ryzen 7 7745HX and RTX 4060. So I'm really excited about this. Um, like I said, because I, I don't have that much experience with laptop coolers uh, in the past because I just didn't think it was ever really that worth it because I usually only buy laptops that have really good thermals anyway. Um, so like, why would I need it? But at the same time, you know, if you want your laptop to last as long as possible, and if it can reduce your temperatures by five to 10 degrees, I don't know how much it's gonna actually reduce temperatures. That's one of the biggest questions I have today. Um, either it's gonna reduce temperatures or maybe allow us to use more wattage in the CPU. That's what I hope to see, maybe. We'll find out. Um, if we can see that, that would be fantastic. Okay. Um, and if we can't, then we'll know laptop coolers aren't worth buying, right? So that's the other potential end result of today's video. Um, okay, so Patel says, to precise, I wanted to know what exact fan they're using as you could make one for cheaper as the fans are from China. Uh, and the IETS GT500 is one of the hottest topic coolers and no one has done a teardown before. So yeah. What do you think about the G1440, G18? 4080 versus Legion 7 I4090, if it would be worth taking the Legion. I would get the Legion over the Strix G18 if uh, if it's possible. Uh, what's up, Raul? Uh, have you tested the G16 3060? I've not. Go for the G18 if you have the money. Uh, always lift the back of my laptops one to two inches, and that always provided ample cooling. Though I've seen great results with the IETS GT77 or GT500 that people love, see to love, seem to love. Yeah, so that's kind of the question, like, is it gonna be worth it? So we've got the Legion uh, Pro 5 right here, and we've got the laptops. We can just kind of put the, the Legion asleep and kind of put it in the corner here. Let's get the laptop coolers out and just see what's in each of the boxes. Oh, you know what we can also do? We can just go ahead and get our stock thermals while we're doing the unboxing, right? So um, we can get the current stock thermals. We're gonna do the th stock thermals um, actually um, flat on the desk today, which is not usually how I test, but that's okay. Uh, Cause this is gonna be more like what normal people, how normal people test. All right, so we're gonna be doing Cinebench R23 in a 10 minute test. That'll be our kind of stock thermal test. Um, and we're gonna get that started. And we're also going to get 
HW info going. Perfect. All right, so we've got uh, got that going. Now we're gonna keep the laptop in the same thermal mode. We did do a recent BIOS update for today. We're gonna do performance mode for the laptop. It says it's in balance mode, but let me make sure that we're actually in performance mode. Okay, I hear the fans ramping up. And they are getting fairly loud, right? We're gonna we're gonna do a baseline for the fan noise of like the laptop by itself, the the system uh, on its own, and uh, then we're gonna add the coolers in there and see, you know, does it potentially reduce the thermals? So the this thing is already just immediately hitting 100 degrees Celsius. Um, pretty sure you guys can see well let me just turn this a little bit i just unplugged the back of the laptop um okay do, do, do. the um bad timing there okay so we're plugged back in, cool beans. All right, so pretty much literally the moment, the moment I plugged it back in, it was back to 100 degrees Celsius. All right, so we're gonna let this test run. We're gonna look at average clock speed as well as, um, you know, we're gonna look at average clock speed as well as power throughput and average temperature during a multi-minute run segment. Um, and that's what we're going to really be comparing with. All right. And we'll just flip the GPU overclock button on for now. And from here, we're not going to mess with the Lenovo Vantage. Okay. So we're going to be in performance mode, GPU overclock. We're going to let default fans run. Uh, and let's see how things shake down. Okay, so um, out of the box, you can see we're doing 101 degrees nonstop thermal throttling on this Legion Pro 5. Um, most of the cores are in the high 80s, but like two of them are at 99. Uh, three of them are in the low 90s. So basically, I think we have a kind of semi uneven pace job here because two of the cores are getting extra hot. Um, but theoretically, this should still be able to help us maybe increase our performance by increasing our wattage pull right now doing 76 watts of power through the, G through the CPU on average for our package power. Um, we're going to let this go for several minutes, like I said, and we're going to get an average and then we're going to compare. Okay. So, but before that, before that, uh, happens. We are also going to start unboxing these laptop coolers and see what they're like, right? Okay, so um, let's do our unboxing of the laptop coolers first. So we're going to start with the cheapest one, the K-Bin K K K Notebook Cooler, two USBs, anti-skid stick fans. Look at these features, fans with lights, USB X2, anti skid stick. You got to have an anti skid stick on your laptop cooler. Otherwise, it's a trash laptop cooler. All right. Um, multi angle, that is pretty cool. Low noise, according to this. Um, but this thing's only 12 bucks, $12.99. I mean, that is so cheap. Um, and it'll be super interesting to see. Maybe this thing will actually improve um, thermals as much as the more expensive coolers, but maybe not. Okay, so there it is. That's what it looks like. It's actually looks pretty well designed, like all mesh along the top here. Um, the bottom has some nice rubber feet here, or I guess kind of foam feet. A lot of airflow can go through here. Um, oh, and this stand, all right, this stand 
pops up and has little slats in the back here. So you can pretty, it looks like you can pretty easily and reliably tilt the laptop to whatever angle you want it to be. If you want it to be tilted more aggressively or less aggressively, um, or just more flat, but I'm guessing you want to do at least, at least angle one is what I'm thinking. If you want to maximize your airflow. Um, so, so yeah. All right. So there's that. And then here's a thank you card. Lifetime warranty card. All right. Wow. It's a lifetime warranty here. Um, if you have any advice, any shortage, if you find any shortage of the product, if you find any, if you find any shortage of the product, please contact us via email. All right. That's pretty funny. Shortage. Um, anyway, it's cool. It's all good. It's whatever. Uh, but if you have defective or bad quality, when you see it, let us, let them know. And there's the support email. All right. That's cool. Um, so our phone holder, this is our phone holder doodad thing. And let's just go ahead and pull this out. We'll set this on the table here. We got one USB a to USB a cable. All right. So obviously not going to be super high throughput on the, on the bandwidth. All right, and then this, I believe, just goes right into this slot right there. Cool, and um, based on what I'm seeing here, you would basically put your phone right like that. Interesting, that, I mean, I suppose that'll hold most phones okay. It's not bad, I guess. All right. Um, it's a nice little extra feature. I mean, it probably costs them like five cents to add that. Um, but for for 12 bucks, this seems pretty cool. So yeah, you put your laptop up on this and that's, that's what you get right there. All right. Um, wow. All right, so that's the, that's the cabin. Um, Let's try plugging it in and see what would see what happens. Uh, Shabzi says all these laptop coolers are garbage. <laughs> the IHGT 500 is the best one. Yeah, well, we're gonna find out, right? We're it's, it's the test today. Is it actually are all these other ones garbage and the IHGT are the only one that's good? All right. So, where are we supposed to plug this in? There are no instructions. What I'm seeing is two USB A's here on the back. Looks like we can plug one. Uh, do we go in? Yeah, we just do that, right? That's, that's how it works. You just plug both in right there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm guessing we can plug it in right here. Ooh, we've got lights. We've got airflow. So, Wow, it is pretty quiet, actually. I don't really hear it almost. I hear it just a little bit. Um, there is a little bit of airflow going through here. So we'll have to see. Again, only $13 for this cooler. It's definitely got some airflow going here. That My hand feels a little cooler than it did. Um, and it's it is pretty quiet. Um, so it, this, this little knob right here is an adjustable knob. You can make it faster or slower or turn it off. Okay. So popping over to our speed test here. All right. I'm going to take a screenshot. We're doing a hundred. Our average wattage is 74.3, 101 degrees, 4.616.
gigahertz on the core clock. All right, so, uh, yeah, 74.3 uh, watts, 101 degrees, and 4.61 on the core clock, okay? So that's our defaults. Uh, let's see here. Here, I saved the screenshot. It was just after it ended. Um, let's see here. Yeah, 4. Point, this is... These are all so close to what it was. Uh, it's just slightly, sl like like a couple seconds after it ended, basically. Um, so these are going to be flat on table results, and let's put this in laptop coolers test. All right, and. Uh, Bingo. So we're going to save that. That's going to be our, our stock. Um, yeah, so it was 4.61 on the core clock. 100, it was basically 100 and right, right exactly 100 degrees on the CPU package temps. Um, and then the core package was 74.3 or whatever. Um, this video is going to break hearts. Uh, it sounds like it. There's some very attached people in chat um, to these laptop coolers. Okay. Um, okay. So here we go. We are ready to slap the first cooler down on here. All right. All right. It feels pretty sturdy. Feels pretty sturdy on there. I mean, it's kind of a, li a little bit wobbly, maybe. Um, let's go ahead and get the... Get the cool... I'm getting the cooler moving. All right, the cooler's going. I can hear it going. All right. Um, so our final score was 17. So our, our stock score... I should pull this a little closer for this. Our stock score out of the box... 17,149, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I like, I wouldn't call that like a, a perfect score, but we're not going to do the full test. We're mainly looking at just the thermals. The score is not our, our focus in this test anyway. The, it's really looking at our thermals in terms of clock speed, power throughput, and temperatures. That's what our goal is. Um, so we're going to start a new 10 minute run with this. $13 laptop cooler. It's started now. All right. We are already at 100 degrees Celsius immediately. Um, so we're immediately at 100 degrees Celsius. The bigger question though is what's the core package power going to average out to? So we're going to, we're going to reset it. Cause uh, stock without a laptop cooler, it was doing 74.1 watts 74.1 watts is our baseline right now it's doing 81 watts on average which is uh an improvement our temperature has not improved but our power throughput has and our clock speed is also a little better here initially at start at 4.7 gigahertz instead of 4.61 so let's let it go for uh, at least five minutes uh, and we're going to see what it averages down to after a while. Let's go ahead and unbox our next laptop cooler while we're doing that. All right. So next up is the Langstar laptop cooling pad. This has games equipment. All right, this has games equipment, business office, Wi-Fi, wind speed regulation. Wind speed regulation, folks. What other laptop cooler has wind speed regulation on it? I don't know. <laughs> light regulation. I mean, light regulation. That's amazing. Silent. Strong cooling. All right. Awesome sauce. Um, 
<laughs> All right, let's go with the, uh, let's go ahead and open this guy up. Ooh, this one's bigger. This one has a wider base. Um, all right, so that's the box. Ooh, this one's got nice blue trims to it. Um, this one has six fans on it. You can see uh, the back has a lot of ventilation. The front has a lot of ventilation. This one's definitely designed for larger laptops. Looks like you lift these up to stop the laptop from falling down. Doesn't look as secure of a design compared to the, uh, the first one we did, but maybe. Interesting. All right, and uh, is there legs? Okay, so there's little feet that pop out here. You pop those feet out, very nice. And then uh, for USBs, looks like we get a braided USB cable uh, that comes with it. That's kind of cool. And this plugs into say like one of these, I'm guessing, right? And then this says probably, so looking at our controls here, we've got two knobs back here. One likely is gonna be for our RGB, and one is gonna be for our fans. And then we got one USB-A pass-through. Um, okay, so laptop cooling. Pull out the legs. Pull out the front feet. Plug in the USB-A. Rotate the two knob switch. You can adjust the fan speeds and the lights. Yep, just like I thought. All right, so without further ado, let's um, let's check out how the first K-Bon is doing. All right, I do, I do honestly, the K-Bon, I like that the K-Bon has more adjustment in terms of how vertical it gets. Um, but this one is bigger. I feel like it has a wider base and it would definitely be bigger for a larger laptop, more like the Blade 18 or something like that. Um, notice there is no place for your phone, but maybe, could you put your phone right here? You could. So this, this doubles as a phone holder right here in front. Not a very good one, but it seems to work okay. So, kind of loose, honestly, but okay. Um, we've got another USB-A. Let's just play with the lights a little bit here, see what it look like. Not that the lights matter that much. But, oh, wait. So um, these knobs, one knob controls three of the fans. The other knob controls the other three fans. So they do not control the lights and the fans individually. It's, they, it's one knob is three fans, but the other knob is the other fans. So um, you need to turn, I don't know why they could have all just done it on one switch. That doesn't make any sense. Um, Anyway, hmm. All right, cool beans. Let's do our audio test for the cheap fan. Let's see how loud this guy is. Where's my, oh, my audible meter is right here on the mic. All right, so we're gonna, let's go ahead and, we are seven minutes into our test right now. Let's go ahead and see how loud everything is. All right, so we're gonna put the front foot of the thing against it right there. And we're just gonna tilt it at an angle here. All right, so uh, let's see what our decibel meter is.
Okay, so the K-Bond does 52.7 decibels approximately of total fan noise between the laptop and the laptop cooler going on at the same time at maximum velocity or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so let's take a look at our laptop performance. And I am going to also go ahead and screenshot this. So um, we can save it. Do, do, do. Okay, but just, uh, well, I mean, I could just go over it, I guess. Uh, all right, so. Let's go over it. We got, uh, we're eight minutes into the test. We are averaging 4.9, uh, 4.69 gigahertz. So that's about, uh, 90 megahertz more. So 0.1 gigahertz gain in terms of all core clock speed. Our temperatures are roughly the same 100 degrees Celsius nonstop thermal throttling. Our power limit is currently at 75.6 but the average during the last eight minutes has been 73.8 which is essentially the same very very close to the same average it's like within um within one watt of each other right now so i personally don't really see that as much of a gain Uh, certainly not a noticeable gain. So, um, yeah, I questionable as to whether this one really would be worth it. Our core clock speed being 90 megahertz or whatever faster. That's the biggest difference right now that we're seeing. Um, right now, the laptop, like I've got Process Lasso going right now. That's really prioritizing Cinemench R23 for benchmarking fairness. And it's kind of affecting my ability to screenshot stuff. So I'm tempted to stop Process Lasso. But I suppose I can always look back on the stream and see the exact CPU package power. Oh, wait, CPU package power has averaged 79.4. I was looking at the wrong one, 79.4. No, that is more. That is more than what we had, which, okay, so that, that lines up better with what we, with what we were hoping to see. Okay, so this is the K-Bon. Okay, uh, so that's, we'll, we'll pull these up side by side. Uh, K-Bon Max Fan. Um, so basically we got 90 megahertz increase with about five more watts of power. I was reading the wrong thing for a second there. So, um, so yeah, the package power, 79.1 on average, same temperature. And we averaged our core clock for our core clocks was uh, 4.697, which is definitely better. So that's good. And our, our score also was 500 more, 500 or 400 and something more on the Cinebench R23 score. So we did see a performance improvement. Um, what's the application I'm using? I'm using HW Info 64. That is the that is the application I'm using. All right, so we are ready to start with our next our next um, test thermal laptop cooler. 
All right, so honestly, that was a better result than I thought we were going to get right out the gate. And that was the cheapest laptop cooler out of all of them. So I'm hoping it just gets better from there, right? Okay, so here is, let me zoom out so you can see a little better. There we go. Um, so here's the K, the, here is the Langstar. Liang Star, I'm not sure exactly how to say it. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that all the fans are turned up. All right, so we are, we are turned up to maximum on the fans. And we are as tall, we're as tall as the laptop cooler gets, which is, this is not very angled, if I'm being honest. Um, and then our fan, or oh, let's just see our, see here. So if you wanted to have your phone holder, you can have your phone holder just like that. I have beautiful Carla on my phone. Um, that's my fiance, if you don't know. Um, so... Okay, so we're ready to go for our second test. Um, yeah, 17614 for our first test results uh, with the first laptop cooler. A nice performance gain. But we're, again, we're not focusing on the, the we're not focusing on this number so much as we are focusing on the uh, thermal numbers. That's where our, our big focus is. Okay, so let's go ahead and start again. And that's going to run in the background. We'll let that go. Perfect. All right, we're going to reset our numbers. There we go. We've got reset numbers now. And uh, we're gonna let that go for a little while. Let's go ahead and unbox the next laptop cooler while this is happening. And uh, here we go. All right, so we'll let that. This one. This one, I don't even see the name of it. The BM13 gaming laptop cooler. Uh, <laughs> If we pop over to this guy, it is <laughs> this one's the Amuzi. I aim Amuzi, Amuzi. I don't know how to say it. The Amuzi. Um, okay, and this one costs twenty three ninety nine. So the one we're currently using right now is a $28 one. That's what we're doing the test on. We're about to unbox the $24 one. All right, so shabam, shabam. And it looks like we're gonna need some scissors to cut a little bit of uh, wrapping there. There it is. All right, let's uh, adjust the camera just a little bit. And once again, we have uh, almost the, like, that looks like the exact same braided cable as the one we're currently testing. Um, this one, this one, believe it or not, also has game equipment, business office, wind speed, multi-angle and light regulation. There is light regulation on this laptop cooler as well. <laughs> I don't know. I just I think it's hilarious. Um, all right, so this one definitely has a different design. Honestly, there's a part of me that thinks that this one's gonna do a little bit better um, than the last one, but we'll see. Laptop cooling pad user manual. Laptop cooling pad user manual. It is a one-page manual. <laughs> Literally, it's just one sheet of paper, but they call it a manual. Uh, USB 2.0 ports, colorful lights, colorful lights, anti-slip baffle, back view with multi-angles. This one's a little more advanced, honestly. 
Uh, it says to put the laptop cooler on the desktop or table, then put the laptop on it. Insert one head of the USB cable into a USB port. Insert the other head of the USB cable into the USB port of the laptop. Um, and then you turn on the product by adjusting the fan switch. Just get it to start working. There you go. Gently press the LED light switch to turn on the colorful LED lights. So maybe there's a separate LED light switch on this one. We'll have to see. Um, all right, so taking a look at the actual cooler itself. Big fan, four little fans. Um, depending on the air intakes of your laptop, if there's an air intakes in the center middle, this one might actually do really well with the big, the big fan here. Little fan exit air holes here. Um, let's check out the rear adjustable. How does this work? So you pull this out and then you, yep. So you pull this down and then there's a metal bar. Okay, right here. You metal bar, you gotta grab it from, you gotta grab it from right here and you pull it up. And there are these little notches that it can go into. So, you got little grooves right here. And the little grooves, you know, you can adjust it to be that angle all the way up and tilted it up to that angle. I guess technically right there. It feels pretty solid, but the big thing is if you lift this up, it could flop down. So that's the important thing to keep in mind. All right, so that's cool. All right, so let's take a look at the front of the Amuzi. All right, so taking a look at the front, we got more leg floppers. I call them leg floppers, but they, they're laptop baffles. Laptop baffles, these don't feel that strong, I'm gonna be honest, I think these are gonna break. That, I yeah, I kind of felt that way with this other one, but honestly, these ones are a little bit stronger. I don't know. Okay, so, yeah, it's all right. Okay, all right, all right. Um, and let's go ahead and check out the controls on this one. Here is the controls right here. There is, uh, it looks to be, looks to have one dial and then one button and one USB. There looks to be no USB pass-throughs at all, as far as I can tell. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in, just like that. And we'll plug in I'm going to swap this to a USB in the back. There we go. All right. Here, okay, so we're plugged in. There's our RGB lights. Hey, this one actually looks the coolest out of the ones we've seen so far. Oh, you can adjust the RGB lights. Like there's pulsing. And I just turned it on. Interesting. Oh, when you turn on these fans, these ones turn off. If you don't have the thing going, these lights turn off. This button is just for this light and the ring lights around it. Pretty cool RGB. Uh, three presses, looks like it gets it to be solid, steady. Flashing. Yeah, so three presses, and looking around, you got RGB going around. It's just one color lights going all the way around. So there you go. There's your um, Amuzi lighting. Let's go ahead and do our fan noise test and check out our performance of the the other one here, this other um, Il Ilang or whatever. All right, so here is our overall fan noise.
55 decibels with the Ilang. Um, let's go and take a look at our performance numbers. So, once again, thermal throttling right at 100. 4.718 for our core clock speed average, which is the highest we've seen. And our CPU package power doing 80.3, 80 80.4 for our average package power. That is a new record. That is a new record for our performance, 4.718 and 80.4. Uh, so this is now about uh, six watts of increased performance over the stock wattage um, and more than 1.1 gigahertz increase to speed. Not bad, not bad. I do think I do think that we are seeing some actual performance improvement here, uh, which I really like to see. That we're actually getting performance improvement. Trying to screenshot this if we can here. Uh, do these laptop cooling pads being supplied full power that they need? Yes, I'm quite confident. Um, one USB A should be enough. But we'll see. It looks like we're struggling to get our screenshot taken until after it's finished. We'll just have to let the score finish here. And we'll immediately take the screenshot. Just like we did on the last two because it basically is failing right now. All right. So it's just about to finish right now. There's our score. Boom. All right. So. 4.716, 101 degrees, 80.37 for our core wattage average. This is the, uh, this is the, the Lang Star. Yeah, the Lang Star. The Lang Star. Uh, Max fan, this is a uh, 110 megahertz gain with six watts of power gain. We'll save that. Beautiful. So we're seeing some performance increases. We're not using the most expensive one yet. Um, interesting. Look at our score. Our score was better. 17, 17,804. So uh, the score just keeps creeping upwards. Awesome sauce. That's really great to see. Um, in terms of overall feel of the Langstar, um, it's a twenty-eight dollar. It's a twenty-eight dollar cooling pad. Honestly, it's it's not bad. It's not as flashy though as the um, as the Amusi, but um, it's work. It seems to be working fine. It's obviously big enough. It's. It doesn't also have the same angling capacities as the other two so far, which is kind of a downside. Um, I don't know. I feel like this one's a little bit overpriced for what you're getting, but they're all they're all pretty cheap anyway. But um, but yeah. All right. So that's our uh, that's our Langstar. Let's go ahead and swap out for the next one. Um, where did it go? There it is. All right. So. The aim Uzi. Let's go. All right, so we'll plug it in. All right, we'll get the fans going. All right, so the aim Uzi looks the coolest, I would say, for sure, out of all the ones. Um, and it's got the most angle functionality. So you can change the angle quite aggressively, which I like that. Uh, honestly, I think it's a little, maybe a little bad idea to, to do it too aggressive. My biggest concern with build quality with the Amuzi is these feet seem a little thin, a little bit flimsy right here. All right. So, uh, all it would take would be one kind of high pressure pressing down on it and it'd probably break those, these plastic legs. So 
this one and the Langstar both had uh, kind of weaker plastic feet. Honestly, the K-Bon had better um, better feet for catching the laptop. This one also does not have a place to put your phone. So that's kind of another downside for the Amuzi. They focus more on the RGB lighting on this one. Um, and the RGB lighting does look kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of a cool looking RGB implementation overall. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we get for a 10 minute test. 17,800 for the Langstar. Now we're going to find out what we get for the Amuzi. We're going to, and we're going to go ahead and unbox our $90 laptop cooler as well. Um, so that's started now. We've got our averages going. Let's see what we get with the IETS GT500. So this one is the uh, most expensive laptop cooler that I could find on Amazon. There might be more expensive ones out there. I don't know, but this one appears to have a USB-C um, connection with three USB-A hub. So you can use it as kind of a docking thing as well. So it's also very large. It's the largest box out of all of them. So we'll have to see how that affects things. All right, so looking in here, do we have anything else in here? So that's it. Everything is in this package. Oh yeah. I can definitely instantly tell um, quality, Build quality on this one feels more sturdy, without a doubt. Um, and the, like the foam here is just really, really awesome to feel, which is really nice. All right, so uh, I don't know why they include this cutout here, but they have a cutout. We've got a USB-C to USB-A connector here. See if I can get it to focus correctly. USB A to USB C connector. I'm guessing this is what you connect to the laptop. Inside of here, we have a power adapter. Whoa! So this one's not just powered through USB A. You're gonna actually need to plug this sucker in to something. You'll need the wall outlet, it looks like. All right, so we'll have to get that plugged in. Now this foam pad, I'm not sure why there's a secondary foam pad. It's kind of interesting. Um, hmm, okay. Can any of these other foam pads? Oh, you can take this secondary foam pad out. Interesting. And it feels like this thing can come up. It's all, it can all come up. So you could replace this if you need to. Um, there are magnets on the bottom of this magnets here all the way around uh, I guess to help hold it in place so it's not super firmly being held in place you're probably going to want to keep this on there to improve the airflow um, like the airflow seal around the laptop and honestly you're probably going to want to keep the secondary one in there too unless you have a very small laptop like the G14 you probably want to use this secondary thing um, but the idea is you want the outside edges of the laptop to sink into this memory foam this is memory foam. It feels very comfy, cushy, very cushy, very soft. Um, you definitely don't want your air intakes to be blocked by this memory foam. That's probably one of the most important things I'll say. Um, all right, so looking at our, we've got one fan. This is all about functionality over form or style. For sure one big fan here all right how to use sealed foam if your laptop is 15 to 17 point inches 17 15 to 17 point three inches you need to only use large sealed foam if your laptop is 13 to 14 inches you need to combine two foams to use if so yeah basically smaller laptops you use the inner seal as well otherwise you just use the outer foam for your bigger laptop um looks like this do these come out yes so these can come out and go lower or higher. I like that to accommodate different size laptops. Also, 
I want to mention these feel really solid. I don't think these little metal clips right here, these little laptop holders are going to break. I think it's going to be just fine. Also, you can kind of extend these out a little bit. So if you have a big laptop that's thick along the bottom, you can, you can get it in there and it'll hold it just fine. Um, all right, so flipping it over, what do we got on the bottom? We've got, um, whoa, we've got, look at this. We actually have a air filter that is removable. Removable air filter. So you can help keep the dust out of your laptop. Um, that's really cool. I like that. That is that is actually really cool because otherwise, you know, this might help reduce the amount of dust going into your laptop. And uh, for the bottom section, we got laptop feet right there, and then this, oh, these combine together to make your feet angled up. So they can go really tall, they can go really shallow, or it can go all the way out to just be a little bit up in the air. Um, you know, very minimal or very steep. Kind of cool. Um, I like it overall. I like it. Uh, I think this is going to be a good solid platform to hold a heavy laptop without having to worry about it too much. All right. Um, and then along this, uh, along this left side, we have our USB controller. And hub here. Uh, let's see here. So here's our DC in. DC in power button, RGB lighting, motor speed button. Along this side, we have our three USB A outs. So you can use keyboard and mouse plugins here as a USB hub and our USB C in, which is interesting. So um, your data throughput won't be very good through those ports, but that won't matter for your peripherals like keyboard and mouse um, very much. So. Very nice. Okay. Very curious about this one. Um, this one's a little more complex than the others that we've tested. Uh, but we need to go ahead and get into seeing the results on the AMUZI. So let's go ahead and transition and check our, our fan speed noise out. So we'll start with the fan speed noise. We're seven minutes in, so we've got three minutes to check this out. All right, so here we are. Let's see how loud this Amuzi is. Fifty-three point two, fifty-three point two. Um, so that makes it. Uh, let's see here. What was the what was the K gun? The K bin? Let me check. Check in the live stream real quick. Uh, Fifty two point three for the cabin. So the so far the cheapest one has been the quietest one. Um, let's take a look at our performance levels with the AMUZI. So this is the twenty four dollar AMUZI laptop cooling pad. We are doing four point six nine gigahertz across uh, all cores on average. So this is in between. Not quite as high. Um, our package power is 79.5, also not quite as high. So basically, so far, the Langstar has been the best performance um, with it. Makes sense because this, this Amuzi has a central fan. It, it's, it's really like not as optimal for the Legion. Um, 
Pro 7i, uh, sorry, the Legion 5 Pro, which is what we're using here, because the intakes are on the sides, and if you have a central fan, it's just not as good, you know, of a uh, experience, I think. All right, so we have 15 seconds left right now on this. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, I guess, the second best performance, but at the same time, it is fairly loud. Yeah. All right. So very nice overall. Let's see here. Um, not, I mean, the, yeah, I'm just talking right now. Sorry. We're just waiting for this to finish. It's almost done. I'm waiting to do the screenshot here. Trying to time the screenshot correctly. It's on the last rows right now. Probably five, four, three, two, one. Got it. All right. So. Here's our end result. 4.696 for our clock speed on our core clock. 100 degrees Celsius once again, and our power was 79.6 watts of power, which is the second most, I believe. So overall, pretty good. Again, seeing some improvement to our performance, um, and it's it's not it's not too bad. So this is going to be uh, a Muzi, and we got uh, about 100 megahertz increase with about five watts of power increase. Cool. So we'll go ahead and save those results. And we're going to move into setting up the IETS GT500. See if it's as good as the reviews say. Um, I'm actually super curious because it's, it's definitely probably the most recommended laptop cooler out there. Um, and we're going to put it through its paces and find out if it's trash today or not. So, yeah. All right, so here is the power adapter. Let's go ahead and get the power adapter plugged in. Uh, I do want to point out that this is angled pretty nicely for plugging stuff in so you, uh, it won't take up more than one slot on my power strip. That's a nice touch because this is another thing you have to plug in around your desk and it's kind of annoying if you lose you know, if you lose a uh, part of your power strip to an extra tool like this, that like a, a big chunk of it, like some power adapters take like two or three out of the uh, out of the wall. So to plug this in, we're gonna need to move this over here to plug it in on the left side. So if I can show that, plugging it in right here. All right, and let's go ahead and press the power button. Oh, uh, that's loud. Wow. But, wow, I can feel the air moving much more than the other coolers. And interesting. This is sucking air in from the back. So this is sucking air in, to the, in from the back and out here. So it's going to push air into the bottom of the laptop, essentially, is what it's going to do. Um, aiding, essentially aiding... The, the stock fans. Okay, so uh, let's check to see our power. So we were, we were at maximum power throughput. That is minimum power throughput. I think it's completely, it's gonna completely stop. I think it's gonna completely stop. Yeah, it, this is high quality. I can't even reach in there. I can't even reach in there to feel if it's going to stop. Oh, yeah. So it, there it finally stopped. So you can take it all the way down to nothing if you slide the slider all the way down. I'm, a, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to add just like 10% there. Just moved it just a little bit. And you can hear it. It's pretty quiet when it's only at like 20, 10 to 20% right now. Pretty quiet. One, two, three. 
So this is uh, probably 60% speed. This sucker is loud. I'm hoping the memory foam will help quiet things down a lot. Okay, maybe that was more like... All right, and let's take a look at what these buttons do. So, um, M... Interesting, so these RGB lights are RG... These, these lights are RGB going around this device right here. Um, I'm guessing M stands for mode. Okay, so... We got red lights creeping around it right now. I uh, pressed it again, now it's flashing purple lights, blue lights, I guess it's going through the colors. Now it's going to slowly go through all the colors it looks like. Going from red to orange right now. Okay, now it just jumped over to purple. Press it again, let's see if anything happens. Okay, so red light going, lights going around the outside. There's a lot of different color modes here, wow. How do I just get, there's like, 15 different color modes here. I'm trying to just get it back to the original. There we go. Okay. So uh, the original color looks pretty good. It's like a nice, smooth, gradual transition of color for RGB, um, which does look pretty decent and fairly vibrant. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look super premium, though. Like there is some dimmer sections like right in between here in the middle. Um, but for the most part, it looks pretty good for the RGB lighting. All right. So... Um, Let's test the uh, these other buttons. What do they do? So there's an... It's kind of hard for you guys to see these, I think. So let me see if I can... Can I angle this camera correctly so you can see this a little better? Okay. So M is here on the left, S with a power button, and C over here on the right. So let's try S with a power button. I guess that's speed. Yeah, that's speed, so you can make it go faster. You can make the lights go faster, that's cool. Uh, C. I'm not sure what C is doing. C doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, interesting. Uh, Brian says M equals mode, S equals speed, C equals color lock. Interesting, well, it's not really color locking um, like I would think it would right now but um okay cool so i like i like the overall design of this uh it's got a nice a nice quality feel in the sense that i feel like i feel like you know five years from now this thing will still be around in my life you know whereas i don't really feel that way for the other ones as much um so you don't even need to use the usb-c plug here at all if you don't want to use the power ports here but we should try at least hooking up my mouse through the power port or through that through that hookup um so re so positioning the laptop on here notice that uh, it seals on here really well the entire laptop does rest entirely on the foam no problem now one issue that i'm seeing here is the feet here don't stick up enough You know, so uh, the laptop's basically above the feet, so we're gonna have to pull these feet out. Like that. There we go. Okay. Um, and then let's go ahead and lift the bottom of the laptop up a little bit. All right, so there it's elevated now on the feet, on the legs. I can pull this down. So we are now resting against the legs here. Um, 
And we are completely sealed around the back and sides of the laptop cooler. All right, very nice. Let's try turning it on now. Let's see how loud this gets with just the GT500 running. No laptop fans going. So that's with the GT500 at maximum. Let's put the GT500 kind of like at 50% speed. All right, we'll put the GT at just Barely on. All right, so the GT right now is is barely on. So you could definitely like this actually has a wide range of audio levels that it can do. Uh, the question mark is if you run it quietly, how much does it really help? Like if I were to go ahead and lift this off. It does get louder when you lift the laptop off. I mean, I would say it probably still helps a little, you know, at least at least a bit when it's on low. Obviously, running it on maximum is the way to go if you want to have maximum performance and temperatures. Let's blast it on max and see what the performance is like. All right. Wow, it's so loud. You know, you honestly don't even really need to have uh, these leg things do much. Like, it's not even touching right now, the legs. Um, there's a gap here. So, uh, and the memory foam is just holding the laptop just fine by itself. So, I like, unless you angle it a lot, you won't really need to worry about the legs. Um, we can try elevating it higher for the laptop. Let's try that. Sorry about that. All right. Oh, uh oh, we got one of the legs to pop off. I bet it pops right back in, but I'm gonna have to take this laptop off. I put it on backwards. Okay. So we're gonna do the highest elevation. Wow, nice. Feels very sturdy. Um, feels very sturdy overall.
That's what it looks like. Here you can see we've got an air seal all the way around the laptop. Let me change camera angles real quick. Uh, that's the outline that we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to test some games as well um, when we get done with this. We feel, once we figure out which one's the best one, I'm pretty sure it's going to be this one. Um, but yeah, okay. All right, so uh, we are at maximum fan. Let's go ahead and try testing. So the Amuzi. The Amuzi got 17,661 for our Cinebench R23 test. We'll go ahead and reset this and get this going. Okay, right here at the beginning, we're doing 99 watts of power. Let's see. With our USB, USB A hub. Uh, oh. Right. Huh, so far nothing, as far as signal goes, I don't think. Yeah, the mouse is not picking up. No signal from the mouse, not getting throughput on data. Take a look at our performance right now. We are doing... So far... 85 watts of power. Oh man. So this is an additional five watts of power above the other laptop coolers so far in this initial test. Um, interesting, well, I'm hoping yeah, the mouse is still not working right now. So if you do decide to buy any of these laptop coolers, um, it is helpful to me if you can use the links in the description and it helps support me as a content creator, but uh, obviously no pressure, don't use it. Um, but if you can, and it's convenient. So, so far, no USB-A power throughput to any of the USBs. I have tried two of them, two of them so far. I'm trying to get it, pull it out. It's kind of hard to get the, it's kind of stuck in the USB-A port right now. Thanks, Sean, I appreciate you using the link. Okay, I plugged it into the third one now, testing all three. Still no mouse, so. Not sure what's going on with the mouse support. Uh, I could try another device, potentially. 
Very interesting. So my mouse is working instantly the moment I plug it into a different USB port though, so. Okay, so let's see. Wow, so I mean basically if you're if you're okay with getting maximum if you're okay with getting literally maximum possible uh fan noise like this is the loudest this is loud like this the fan of the the fan of the gt500 is louder than any laptop fan i tested this year pretty much or very close to it um well let's see what it's like when we got the laptop on it right uh in this mode with the laptop going itself right so let's see Sixty-five point three is a l extremely loud. Like the MSI GT seventy-seven was about this loud, basically. So, and that's like got four fans going absolutely bonkers. Um, I'm curious the performance you would get with like something like the GT seventy-seven or maybe the MSI GE seventy-eight HX with this laptop cooler. Uh, you might be able to really crank the performance up in a laptop like that as well because it's got the i9 13980hx um and it was basically thermal throttling but it was getting this mo the most performance we saw out of any gaming laptop period for cinebench r23 at least so anyway let's check out our results so far we might as well let this finish because we're three minutes in but so far it's extremely promising Averaging 83.5 watts so far for our entire 10 minute run. 100 degrees Celsius. 4.755 for our clock speed on the Ryzen chip. So we're pulling just without doing anything else, no additional tweaking, no undervolting. We're pulling quite a bit more performance out of that Ryzen chip going from 4.61, uh, right, as the stock. We'll check it. We'll check it and pull each of the screenshots up side by side. Um, and we'll look at each of them um, here in a moment. Uh, but clearly, this GT77 is the, the most efficient in terms of pushing the most amount of air into the laptop bottom, right? So... The question is, can you still hear LOL? It's so loud. That's true. <laughs> Solution, Bose, uh, Bose Sound Comfort 45S. Yes. If you just have good, if you have good headphones, this, this fan noise will be completely irrelevant. It's no big deal at all. Right? So, um, I don't think, I don't think that the fan noise is really that big of a deal. We'll see. Um... If, well, it's, it is not that big of a deal if you have good headphones. If you're playing, trying to play games without headphones, not great, right? Not great. Um, so uh, I am tempted to do my Blade 18. Just throw it on this thing, do a, do a stock run, uh, and see what we get, and then do a... Uh, see what we get for temperatures with and without it because that might it'd probably be good for us to see a secondary uh do a secondary laptop just to see the difference not just this one laptop it also gives us an i9 and intel chip to see how that performs um but we are we're going to be power limit throttle with the blade 18 at 130 watts we can't go above 130 anyway so um it'll be more it'll be it'll mainly be just a temperature reduction big jesse says do it okay We'll do it after uh, we evaluate this together. Um, but yeah. The Alienware M18R1 found out that the one core is hot for me too. Dude, that sucks. I'm sorry, man. Um, have you tried repasting it? Did it make any improvement? Uh, the cooling pad helped cool it somewhat. That's good. And we're down to 44 seconds left on the test. 
Um, Sean says, excited to see how this pairs with my Legion Pro 7i4090 that's coming in tomorrow. Ooh, congrats, man. Um, I'll bet you it's going to pair really well. Uh, yeah, just get ready for a loud fan from the <laughs> laptop cooler. <laughs> I got to say, like, if you're going to go budget, save some money, uh, go with the probably the cheapest one, just that, that cave, cave bin or whatever. That one did pretty dang good for only $12.99. It was quiet. It improved our performance. Um, lightweight, easy to use, but not really great for a huge laptop either. It's more like a 15, 16 inch laptop size at most. Um, and then otherwise, you just want to go maximum performance. Go with like the go with the GT500 and be like, hmm, this thing. yeah, that's a lot of air intake. The other thing I really love about the GT500 is that air filter that it's got in the back. It's going to really help prevent your laptop from being filled up with a bunch of junk air. Okay, so there we are. We got all of them. We're going to save this. Uh, 100... It was like 160 megahertz increase, 9 watts of power, or 8, I don't know, I think it was 9 watts of power increase. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go ahead and pull up our screenshots and compare everything. So, first up, we have our flat on table results. Oh, I got a we got an afterburner popping in here, so let's just turn off our on-screen display for a moment. Okay, so our flat-on table results. Pull this a little closer. Our flat on table results was 4.622 megahertz. On all cores, we did 99, like basically 100 degrees nonstop, 73.7 watts of power for our core package power average through the 10 minute period of time. Our next video, our, our, our Kaben, the, the $13 laptop cooler, Got us to 4.697 gigahertz, almost to 4.7. We're also doing 79 watts of power with the $13 laptop cooler. Certainly a noticeable improvement. Um, that's, you know, jumping between these 73.7 versus 79.5. So that's 5.5 watts of power increase during the Cinebench R23 times five test or Cinebench R23 test. Um, moving on to the Illin Star or L Star, this is the $28 one. We got 4.716. And obviously, improved performance even a little bit more, getting us to over 80 watts of power. The Amuzi got us 4.696, so about 80 megahertz increase. We got 79.6 watts of power, so very similar to the Cabin. Actually, just slightly better than the Cabin. And the GT500 uh, got us 4.75 gigahertz, which is a 1.3 gigahertz increase. Our, our uh, package power was 83. 83 versus 73, so 9.3 watts increase with the GT70, uh, the GT500, the I, IETS, IETS GT500. I don't know how you say it. Um, so that's impressive. So this this cooler clearly wins um, in terms of most air pushed in. It wins from the perspective it's going to keep dust out of your laptop because you have the additional air cooler or air filter and in the back. I love that. Um, honestly, this is making me go, maybe I should use this because it's really annoying cleaning all the dust out of my laptop. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let's try switching it up now. 
We'll try putting my Blade 18 on here. I'm live streaming from it. I wasn't prepared to do this. Uh, but let's let's do a quick test. We'll just do a quick stock test and a quick with the cooler on test. All right, so we'll turn this off for a minute. I like that it's pretty reactive. It, it turns off pretty quickly. Wow, it's so quiet in here now. Oh my goodness. Um, all right, so let me get this ready. All right, and this is not gonna be a good like benchmarking test at all because I have a bunch of stuff open. I'm live streaming at the same time. Honestly, I'm live streaming at the same time. I don't, I don't know. Let's. I guess I could try live streaming a game. That's probably the best way to do this because uh, otherwise I'm gonna CPU bottleneck hard and it'll cause disruptions to the live stream. So let me just open Steam up and we'll get into, uh, let's do a cyberpunk. All right. So we're gonna be flat on table during our initial test here. And just making sure that we're good to go. Do I have Afterburner open? Let's get Afterburner going. And this may cause disruptions with the live stream, but I hope not. Um, on screen profile. Do I have 15? Let's do 500. All right, so. Um, So this should be, we're on display capture mode. Let me put me. Oh, hold on. oh I'm so sorry, guys. Like I said, I wasn't really ready for this. Good morning, night I wasn't planning city. on doing this. Yes, we're going to do a quick, quick and dirty cyberpunk test. 30. So here we are. We're flat on table. Um, let me also just pull up. Make sure that we're in boost and high mode. WNS News. All right. New details and, have emerged uh, on the attempted abduction we'll of Max fans as well for the Blade 18. Sponsored Dashi Parade. Early accounts first. All right, and let me check our settings. So right now we're 2560 by 1600. With let's just pop everything up to ray tracing ultra. Quality, frame generation is enabled. Perfect. Okay, so we're streaming at the same time right now. Can you come by the camp? Interesting temps, interesting wattage utilization. Our CPU is probably gonna bottleneck us really hard right now because we're live streaming at the same time. On my way. Um, That's good to hear. Give me a little more. I can't intel. really see for sure. What's the live believe? stream coming through okay? Well, it, uh, would be better to... Let me guess. Saul, right? Yes, yeah, so it looks like the stream's okay. Uh -huh. so, um, see you soon. I weigh too much right now. I should switch to. Should I go to a different area? Like, different section of the match. So we'll go to, different, go to my different save here. Um, this is near the end of Cyberpunk's story. Um, man, it's interesting that our 40... Okay, I just killed the boss villain right Adam here. Smasher. Finally. All right, so this is a... I done guess this is soul work. And gone. Very interesting that our GPU is only doing 112 watts right now. Let's give it... I don't really like that section of the map because it's not very... There's like no NPCs or anything and it's not a very complex area. So we're gonna switch over. All right. Yeah, the Blade 18 is doing some work right now. See That's right, we're, uh, we got a lot going on. All right, so the CPU right now, okay, this is much better. Heavy load on the CPU. 
All right, so we'll give you a ride. everything's on ultra. Ray tracing is enabled. Marcus, Frame generation is turned on. We're getting 82 FPS right now in this section. We're live streaming at the same time. This is not really a valid test necessarily, but look at our CPU. We are doing 97 degrees. All right, 96 degrees, 100 degrees on that CPU. We're gonna sit here in this exact same spot. All right, and then we're gonna lift up and put the laptop over onto the over onto the laptop cooling stand, and we're gonna try running it again. Well, our CPU came down in wattage and in temperature. Uh, we were doing 100 watts, but it like basically power limit throttled, I think, the CPU down a bit. 66 watts to the CPU. GPU is doing 65. So, I just kinda wanna get us to a good, stable spot for our temperatures, and then we can be like, okay, it was like 82 for the CPU. 65 for the GPU. So this is flat on table. No. Nothing else going on. Um, all right. Let me go ahead and prep to move. Laptop over. All right, and we're going to... We are going to go ahead and lower um, let's see I should be able to just switch this over lifting the laptop up putting it onto the IETS all right so it's now on uh, it's the GT500. The GT500 is now turned on. Oh, we can hear it. And make sure the stream is good. So you can see it right there. Um, let's go ahead and see if the temperatures come down at all. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and do a new average for our FPS as well. Though I don't think the FPS average is really going to matter that much in this scenario. Um, you know, we were streaming the other way. Let me switch back to um, is it this one. Yeah, we're in this mode. All right, so this way you can see the on screen. All right. So our temperatures went from like 82 down to 77 on the CPU. Our GPU temps went from, what was it, 63 to 61 right now. All right, and new average for the FPS going up just now. Just press the button. And uh, all right, so very similar levels of wattage going through the CPU and GPU. The temperature went from 83 on the CPU down to 74, right? 75. Four degrees cooler on the GPU so far. Let's give it another minute at least to see how much air it can, it can cool the system down, if, you know? certainly a noticeable drop in temps just in terms of gameplay adding that cooler um, that's an eight degree drop I would say it's about an eight degree drop well six now six now ten you'd have to do an average to get a, a more precise number but it looks to be in the six to eight degrees cooler on the CPU and three degrees cooler on the GPU. That's what it looks to be at least during this quick and dirty test on the Blade 18. So very interesting results. 
Um, I mean, 60 degrees on the, CPU, on the GPU is so cool, and it's nice to see the CPU coming down below 80. Um, so that's that's cool. That's very cool. All right. Uh, I mean, it's literally it's literally cool. Uh, so cool. Let me go ahead and exit the game. And I hope that was a good example for you guys. Wow, that thing is so loud. You definitely have to be not adverse to fan noise if you're going to use one of those. All right, we're going to uncheck, uncheck max fans and lower that down. All right, so uh, we're ready to do some gaming tests with the Legion 5 Pro. We've got Dead Space, Warzone, and Time Spy. Um, and we're going to compare it with the stuff, the, the tests I had out of the box. The SCAR 16 CPU temps worry me. Well, you probably would get some nice improvement there, so. Which cooling pad is this? This is, um, this is the IETS GT500 is the one we're testing right now. Um, okay, and that's the one that was the coolest by far. It improved the, it improved the cooling the best. All right, so we'll start with Time Spy. And see uh, see what we can get going with 3D Mark Time Spy. Um, Sean says, do you think in this scenario the cooler would hurt the performance, like mess with up the laptop's integrated cooling? Not, I don't think so. If anything, I would say it's probably going to improve the longevity because you'll have less dust in your system most likely that would be my guess but it's, it's hard to say is averaging 80 temp on my cpu okay for it on the gaming laptop yeah that's fine um 80 degrees is good um if you go start going above 90 that's when you're getting closer to thermal throttling and that's when you might start losing performance like what we're seeing on the legion 5 pro here all right so um okay so Let's go ahead and get the I at five the GT five we're gonna call it the GT five hundred. Let's get the GT five hundred going. We got a time spy running. Let's do our time spy run. All right, so time spy run with the laptop cooler on the Legion Pro five. Let me see if I can pull up the original time spy run as well, and let's get the camera positioned a little bit better for these tests. There we go, and we'll zoom in on the screen. We'll tilt the screen down just a little bit. Shabam. All right, and, uh, okay, and Time Spy, Time Spy, all right, and we're going to do, uh, that's not what we want. So, Right now, we're doing 107 watts. We're doing 57, 58 degrees, 60 degrees on the CPU. So both the CPU and the GPU right now are under 58, 59. That's really good. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to flip over right now over to the... Uh, this is the this is the stock temps right here in the same section 65 69 so we're getting noticeably less um temperatures and i'm not sure about performance performance probably be very similar but noticeably less temperatures right now on the uh, on the laptop with the gt500 running 
So that's really great to see. It was like, looked like about eight, like anywhere from six to 10 degrees drop in temps. 57 degrees on the GPU right now, 59 on the CPU. Um, and I would assume that we're gonna have some noticeably lower levels of, uh, like basically I think the other laptop coolers, like the $13 one, we're gonna see improvement, but not as much improvement as with this GT500. So uh, right now, 59, 59.65. And if I go ahead and switch over to the live stream here, you can see 65.73 for very similar area. This is the the flat, like raised up on a table with no laptop cooler. All right, going back to, this is the GT500. Again, 59 degrees, 66 for the CPU. So yeah, definitely improving our temperatures without a doubt. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed. All right, so we're about to see the CPU. We're about to see the CPU. See if we can get the CPU temps to pop up here at the end. 91 degrees. This is with the laptop cooler. 80, 82, 83 watts. 96, 95. We never hit 100 degrees um, in that short burst. Let's see if in the, and without the laptop cooler, let's see if it hit it. All right, so... Here is the uh, on the table option here. This is on the table running right now. 95 degrees, 73 watts, 80 watts, 99 degrees, 100 degrees without the laptop cooler. Definitely made a difference. We were starting to thermal throttle there without the laptop cooler. So this is gonna be the stock score. Uh, well, this is the GPU overclock score uh, with the built-in OC. 10,880, 11,605, and with our cooler, we got 10,974. Ooh, ooh, a little bit of boost to the performance. Um, and then 11,692, not much of a boost to the CPU, but I think if we kept the CPU test running for longer, we would see a bigger difference. Um, because it's only a short burst. It doesn't really give it a chance to thermal throttle much really at all there. So interesting. Is the cooling pad at 100% speed? Yes, the cooling pad's at 100% speed. All right, so we're about to go to dead space. Um, what about dead space on the SCAR 16 gets to 95 degrees on the CPU, even the SCAR 18, why is that? Because um, dead space is a very CPU demanding game. That's why. All right, so we're about to go into dead space right now. And we're going to compare performance. Uh, we're going to compare performance with with the laptop. Okay, it's going to be interesting. All right, so this is going to be this is going to be very interesting. All right, um, I better turn. My light's off back here. So it's not as colorful. All right. up the resolution here. Ultra with DLSS on quality, that's our standard. All right, so right out of the gate, our temps are so much better. 88 degrees, 87 degrees. Obviously not amazing, but we were hitting 
you'll see. We'll, we're we're going to switch back and forth between laptop cooler and no laptop cooler here soon. Let's get to the benchmarking area. Obviously, 90 degrees Celsius is not great, but it's it's better than what we were hitting before, as you'll see. Notice the GPU is also 58 degrees. Very cool GPU right now. This game just really slams the CPU hard. Also notice the CPU wattage doing 67 watts right now. I think it'll be pulling about the same amount of wattage overall. Um, so, all right. So we're, I mean, we want to give this a chance to really, we want to give it a chance to really thermal throttle. You know what I mean? All right, so we're gonna look this way. Okay, so now that now that we've got it sitting here, let's switch over to our no laptop cooler. All right, so this is gonna be the no laptop cooler. All right, and here it is. No laptop cooler doing 64 degrees on the GPU, 90. Six on the CPU right now. Notice the wattage, 62 watts, 95, 66, 64, 95, 62, 66. What we're seeing here is thermal throttling is what we're seeing. Um, you know, it's kind of bouncing off that thermal threshold and reducing the wattage, I believe, by a little bit. I don't know, maybe not, but I, I, think, the, I think the CPU wants to pull a little bit more wattage. I mean, it should be hit, like, in a moment here, I think it hits 100 degrees on that CPU. Wow, so at full HD, full HD, it's really slamming that CPU. 101 degrees here without a laptop cooling pad. Um, interesting. So notice this, notice the temps. GPU is at 63, 64, really mo more like 64, 102 on the CPU right now, and 70 to 73 watts, okay? So let's see, same exact scenario. Let's go ahead and, uh, go ahead and set that up. Um, here we are, the GT500 with the laptop cooler, 58 degrees on the GPU, um, 91 on the CPU, but we're not in the exact same settings, right? So we're going to walk across here. This is going to be QHD resolution. Then we're going to switch it to full HD and walk back. And that's exactly what we did before. Um, in this scenario, before we were going down to 62 watts pretty frequently on that CPU. Notice that we're, I feel like we're keeping our wattage up a little bit higher on that CPU. A little bit more often. And our clock speed on the CPU is also over 5 gigahertz. I don't think it was above 5 gigahertz um, before I think it was like 4.8 or something like that um, 93 degrees on the CPU, but we're not getting close to thermal throttling and it's maintaining Non thermal throttle, right? That's the key here. Um, I did not reset our FPS or did I? I can't remember. I'm not too worried about the FPS. I'm mainly looking at the, the, the at the thermals um, So let's see let's go to our video options. We're gonna try going out to 1080p um, let me see, did I do 1080p or? Alright, I think I did. Alright, so 1920 by 1200. No, I did 1080, so we're going to go down one more. Okay, so we're at the exact same resolution now. And wow, it really slams that CPU. Holy schmoly, look at that. 
Um, 72 watts, 73 watts, 96 degrees, 97 degrees. Woo-wee. Um, those are spicy. Those are spicy temps, but it's not 102. It's five degrees cooler. Keeping us off of permanent thermal throttle here, this laptop cooler is. But yeah, dead space is insane. Dead space is insane. Okay, so um, we're getting around 90 FPS right now. Looking down this hallway, let's take a look at the example. Getting about a, uh, 90 FPS, but just looking at our temps. We came down in temps. We're getting three, three-ish watts less of performance to the CPU. Well, it depends on the situation. It depends on the time, but it seems like it's averaging at least two, two to three watts less. But most importantly, we're not hitting the 100 degree mark um, right now. So, uh, like I'm going to show you once again, this is this is the stock scenario. Five, four to five degrees cooler on the GPU. Three to four, five degrees cooler on the CPU. And the clock speed appears to be a little bit faster with the laptop cooler because we're not thermal throttling. I would say that's a win for laptop coolers, but not by a, a huge amount. Obviously, I think there are... Uh, I feel like you could repaste this CPU maybe and get better performance or just power limit the CPU down a little bit more um, with maybe custom mode or something like that. That would help keep our temperatures on the CPU in check a little bit more. Okay, so um, next up, we're going to do Warzone. And we're going to compare temps and performance in Warzone. This one's going to be very interesting. Uh, Diego says 200 megahertz more on average. Is the cooling pad at 100% speed? Yes. Uh, Logan comments, sorry, late to this one and others. Seeing a large difference between the coolers um, yes, I would say that there's a noticeable bump in performance uh, and cooling performance of the GT500, but it's not like, it's not like, I don't know. I think, like, for me, I feel like, obviously the GT500, if you're a min-maxer, you want the most performance at the coolest possible temps. The, the IETS GT500 is the best laptop cooler out of the ones we tested today, hands down. But the $12, $13 laptop cooler did surprisingly well for like for the for the money, 13 bucks, and it's quiet. You don't hardly hear it at all, um, which is really nice. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like for me, I, either I would go with the GT IETS GT500 or go with the cheapest one, thirteen dollars. That's my that's my current opinion. Uh, we're in Warzone Two. We're gonna do stock comparison versus with the laptop cooler, and then we'll do a summary of everything that we've found out for today. All right, so we're loading into Warzone right now. I gotta say, this CPU, like, without the laptop cooler, we were bouncing into that 100 degree threshold fairly often, I'm pretty sure. And with the laptop cooler, we're just getting up into the 90s, sometimes into the mid 90s, but we're almost never hitting, we're almost never hitting the max. Which, which is obviously so much better. It's really, it's letting the, it's letting the um, Ryzen chip just fly a little bit harder. Battle Royale quad, so we gotta do a four person. Last time we did a four person, 
I was like, oh no, we're gonna make everyone hate us because we're gonna we're gonna be at um, we're gonna die early because we have to leave. But then it was funny because everyone else died before before us. Okay, so uh, we're gonna apply the new resolution. So we're gonna go to. So we're at 2560 by 1600. We should be on minimum settings. DLSS enabled with quality. Textures are set to high. All right, so we can go ahead. This graphic settings should be applied. Yeah, because they were, that's what it was already applied before we did anything. All right, so let's go ahead and try to get into a match now. Is the IATS worth the money? I would say if you're after like, if you don't mind loud noises, because the IATS GT500 is loud, it's definitely aiding the cooling about twice as much as the other coolers that I tested. So, um, yeah. And then the other thing about the GT500, the air filter is nice. It's nice having the air filter so you don't get dust in your laptop. That prevents you, that, you know, that reduces the amount of maintenance you have to do on the machine um, if you just keep it on the cooler almost all the time. Logan says, what's the name of the $13 one? Yeah, it's in the description. It's like the K Kabin is the $13 one. So, let's find out what kind of temps and performance, see if we have any gains in performance. I don't think our performance is going to go much up here. I'm mainly, in this game, I'm mainly looking just to see if our CPU temps come down a little bit. Um... I gotta say that the, the laptop chassis itself feels like it's a little cooler than it was. Like the, the chassis feels a little more comfortable to keep uh, my hands on it, you know what I mean? We got one kill. Oh, that's not a person. Two kills, let's go. So our temps right now, 54 degrees, 80 degrees. That's that's noticeable improvement. Um, yeah, that's definitely a noticeable improvement. What's the name of the laptop being used? This is the Legion. Pro 5 with the Ryzen 7745HX and the RTX 4060. Um, So again, our temps are 57 and 76. Very nice. I was pressing the wrong key there. That's why I wasn't going forward. I was like, why am I not going forward? I like how you can deploy like seven parachutes. Okay, so here we are. 
We are 55 degrees, 78 degrees on the CPU, 77 on the CPU, 56 watts on the CPU. Let's start running. 103 FPS on average. I did start the average again at the beginning of this little run down here, run through. 102 FPS, 69 for our 1% lows. Very nice, very nice. Overall, good. This is an improvement, I'm pretty sure, um, over the stock um, without the cooler. Let me see if I can grab a gun real quick. What is this gun? Oh, that's a shotgun. We don't want a shotgun, I don't think. We definitely could use a scope. Wow, I'm pretty sure the temps on this are a lot better, but let's, we gotta compare. I wanna go ahead and do our comparison now while the information's fresh. Another shotgun? Okay, all right, uh, let's, let's see here. Okay, so 55 degrees, 76 degrees. Let's pull up our fresh comparison here with the war zone, looking it up right now. Is that our teammate? I'm gonna wave to our teammate here. Okay, so, um, Here's what we're getting right now on, with no laptop cooler. We're getting 68 degrees to the GPU, 91 to the CPU, 61 watts of power right now to the CPU, 109, 107 FPS, interesting. So it was pulling a little bit higher wattage in certain ways uh, on the CPU and getting a little bit more FPS, but uh, the temps, Wow, 90 degrees on the CPU down to 76. Again, look at this. So, uh, 66 degrees, 90. Going to, now this is with the IATS GT500 cooler, 53 degrees, 75 degrees in the same section, very close to the same section of the map. What a massive difference in temps. I do see that we're pulling less wattage to the CPU for some reason, I don't know why. Our actual FPS seems to be very similar. Maybe it's just, just a hair lower, but our temps are just like awesome now. Our temps before were like really bad. Um, and obviously our 1% lows, I just refreshed it. We're getting some kind of 1% low stutters right now. I just refreshed our FPS averages. Um, I'm not sure why they were, we were getting a little bit of stutters there, but I usually go over this hill over here. So I should go to the same area. Wow, we are ranked 10 now. Um, impressive. <laughs> um, our teammate killed two people or killed killed a guy. I'm not seeing anyone. I'm gonna call a mortar strike in on my phone, on my own position. Oh yeah. 
felt good getting some getting rain down oh man <laughs> it's multiple hits huh okay so that killed us there we go but wow the temps 55 degrees 77 degrees and again going back to this was our our temps before 66 and 90 so that's 11 degrees better on the GPU, 15 degrees better on the CPU in Warzone 2. Holy cow. That is, that is a huge difference. Uh, more, bigger, a bigger difference than what we saw in any other, um, any of the other scenarios or games or anything like that. So, uh, wow. Okay. Let's do a summary wrap-up of everything we found out. All right, so um, core features. I would say the, the biggest feature here, I'm going to make this smaller. The biggest feature about the Caven is that it's cheaper. It's the cheapest one, 13 bucks. It does have a USB in and out, and so it has a little USB hub. Didn't test that, but you got tilt on that cheap one. Not very good for big laptops, though. I wouldn't probably get bigger than a 16-inch laptop on that cabin. Um, if you got a 17 or 18-inch, you're going to want to go with one of the other coolers, including potentially the GT500. Now, the big difference between the IATS GT500, you got better RGB lighting. It's, it's fully tiltable. You got the memory foam going around it. Air filter pushing in only clean, dust-free air into your laptop. That's awesome. I mean... You get less dust in it. You don't have to clean the laptop as often. And that's a win-win. Um, and then uh, you got uh, you got the USB USB A to USB C hub. Didn't work for me though. I don't know why it didn't work for me. Kind of sucks that the uh, the USB hub was not working. I don't know. Um, what else? What else uh, were the key differences? We saw more performance in Cinemage R23, not a massive difference in performance, but it was noticeable. And I gotta say that the um, I'm tempted to use this cooler with some of the other laptops to see like when I do an optimization overclocking performance um, run using the laptop cooler for those types of videos to reduce performance, overclock even further, push uh, you know push the CPU. Like if we were thermal throttling with the MSI GT77 without a laptop cooler and then you throw the laptop cooler on there, like you're going to get another 5 degrees cooler or maybe another 5 to 10 watts of throughput through the CPU and GPU at the same temperature. Um, that's phenomenal. Like in Cinebench R23, we saw 9 watts of increased power to the CPU. Inside of Dead, uh, dead Space, we saw like 5 uh, five degrees drop in CPU GPU temps in Warzone 2 we saw like a 10 degree drop in GPU temps and like a 15 degree drop in CPU temps though our performance was also a little bit lower and the power limits were a little bit lower oddly enough I don't know why that's just weird um, but uh, the, the drop in temps were huge very big drops in temps um, so so yeah, very awesome. The Monster GT77 Titan didn't need a cooling pad. What's your opinion? Yeah, the GT77 didn't really need a cooling pad, but when you're doing um, CPU-only workloads, it could benefit from a cooling pad. So that was that's probably the big thing there. The GT77, obviously an awesome cooling mach monster machine, but in CPU-only loads, it could use a little bit of help and get even more powerful. Um, I think the same thing. Th the same thing could be true for the Scar. Uh, 16 scar 18 more power throughput the ge 78 hx more power throughput may be possible because the vrms can take it uh, but the thermal the laptops basically can thermally saturated maybe you'll be able to push um you know like 155 watts instead of like 145 watts of power through those systems with a cooling pad like this hard to say unless you actually test it optimize it and all that so this definitely this definitely imp impressed me I think a cheap cooling pad is a benefit. Um, obviously, I think the, the key thing when you're dealing with these cooling pads is that, like, I've not used a cooling pad for years with my laptops, and it's never been a problem. Like, you don't have to have a cooling pad. 
but you want to min-max your laptop experience, you want to get the best bang for your buck, get the most performance, and make your laptop last as long as possible, having a cooling pad like the GT, IATS GT500 with the air filter and the increased airflow, um, the reduced temperatures, it's going to allow you to overclock or let, especially if your laptop starts thermal throttling at any point, this will help prevent that from ever happening because again, dust, less dust in your system, get cluttering everything up and um, more consistent airflow, really helping push more air through the laptop, improving your um, potential performance by at least, I don't know, anywhere from like one to 5% depending on the game and then, uh, or the task. Uh, maybe even a little more if you're if you're severely thermal throttling like we were in certain titles or certain things you might see more or less performance gain or maybe just the same level of performance but at lower overall temperatures and we did see less um, perform uh, we did see lower temps in the blade 18 when I tested it but we didn't see any increase to performance um, with the blade 18 in cyberpunk 2077 so um, yeah, I think the biggest disappointment for me with the IATS GT500 is that the USB ports were not working. So let's, before we end this, let's see if we can get the ports working on this laptop cooler. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe we can try a different USB plug on the laptop. It's showing a blue light here indicating a connection. All right, so let's take our mouse, wireless mouse dongle. It is kind of hard to press into these too. I'm gonna put it in number two. It's fully in there. It's definitely in there and nothing. We're getting no, no connection. Oh wait, yeah, no connection to this mouse. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on there with the USB plug. Maybe it's only for powering. I'm guessing we've got power in these, but maybe not data throughput. Um, let's try a laptop cooler. Can a laptop cooler get power through this now? Yes. We've got power through the laptop cooler. So we've got power going through them, but just not data going through these ports. So, I don't know, kind of interesting. Whee! It's like the UFO flashy RGB one, I don't know. Kind of cool. This is the Amuzi. Um, yeah, so in terms of laptop coolers, I would say either go cheap, go with the Kaven, um, and unless you need a bigger laptop cooler, then maybe you could pick a different one. Um, one of the, in between ones that were like 25 bucks. Otherwise, I would say just save, if you're gonna, you know, if you got a $3,000 laptop, $2,000 laptop, $1,500 laptop, a $90 laptop cooler that hopefully will last you a long, long time seems worth it to me. I don't know, because the laptop cooler, the next time you upgrade your laptop, you can still use the laptop cooler again. And it's gonna, it, as long as it doesn't break, in theory, it should last you a long time. And I think the GT500 has a good track record of having good durability and long-term um, usability over a long period of time because a lot of users have used it and it's got very positive reviews in general. So those are my thoughts on the laptop cooler. I Am I gonna use one in the future? Definitely yes for any kind of benchmarking or optimization videos. Um, I'm tempted to use this this GT500 cooler, but my table is just a little small that I film on here. And so it would kind of prevent my Blade 18 from um, going off the side a little bit. But I am tempted actually to use this GT500 cooler out on a, on a normal daily basis. Um, just putting my Blade 18 on it and, uh, and actually using it on the regular. But we'll see. I'm still deciding if it's worth the hassle of having to deal with it. But for someone who's going to mainly keep the laptop in one place, or when they get home, they're going to keep it in one place. Yeah, I think I think for ninety bucks, the GT, the IATS GT five hundred, totally worth the ninety dollar price of entry. Lower temps, it'll make your other, it'll make your expensive tech product last longer, uh, I believe. Um, but you you may want to 
you may not want to always run it at 100% fan speed because it is very loud. And if you're someone who's very sensitive to fan noise, obviously you probably don't want, don't want this laptop cooler. Go with one of the other ones. Like the Cabin was really quiet. You basically, it was uh, 53 decibels, which was almost as loud as the laptop fans are out of the box. So you weren't really hearing the Cabin or the other ones very much. Um, so if you want a quiet overall thing, that $13 laptop cooler is freaking cheap. And if it breaks, you can just buy a new one. Uh, so, I mean, easy. Okay. Okay. I think, I think that covers it. I think that covers everything related to the laptop coolers that we got for today. I will be definitely using the IATS GT500 in future videos for, for my optimization and overclocking videos just so I can like show people what the maximum performance of these laptops are when they're fully optimized with a laptop cooler that's really good. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to use the GT500. I'm definitely gonna use it in the future. Um, I'm just not sure if I'm gonna use it on my personal laptop all the time. Like if I was gonna put my laptop over here on my desk and replace this uh, desktop over here, I probably would. I'd probably use it in a, de if I was gonna dock it, I would use a, a cooler like this to dock it and then put like a Thunderbolt 4 dock in there with the power plug. It'd be, it'd be a really great solution. My problem is just my desk is small um, on my table here and I just don't have enough room for it when my filming regularly. You know, cause I'm like half the time I'm filming, I have my Blade 18 like four inches off the table in the back here, cleared out so I can have room and all that stuff. So anyway, that's it for this live stream. I hope you guys found it helpful. Use the links in the description if you wanna support me as a content creator, if you can. Um, otherwise you can always just uh, donate on the next live stream or become a member. Um, or you can use the link on my laptop list as well if you're in the market for a gaming laptop, uh, which I did mention at the beginning of the, the live stream. So um, any op optimization plans for the Legion Pro 7i 4090? I, that is one that I want to do. I was struggling to get it optimized perfectly. That's why I delayed doing that live stream, but it's one that I want to do. Um, so hopefully, Sean, yes, that is my plan. I've got it sitting right over there. Uh, I still have it. I haven't sold it or got rid of it at all. So signing off. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out.